The wide receiver discussion surrounding the Buffalo Bills is all the rage and rightfully so, but what cannot be overlooked is the 2023 breakout season from Khalil Shakir and how he factors into the mix moving forward. We're exploring that today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Well, folks, welcome in. Very excited to talk all about Khalil Shakir today on this episode. A lot of conversation about the Bills and wide receivers and who they need to add, and they certainly do need to add. There's no doubt about that. But what about that Khalil Shakir guy who really came on in a big way in his second season? What can we expect from him in year three and beyond? That's what we're going to unpack today. And we're going to do that by just talking about who Khalil Shakir is, the trajectory that he's on as a player, what he's proven so far, and then from there, unpack what the future looks like for him in this offense. So Khalil Shakir, he's 24 years old. He actually just turned 24 in February. Was a 2022 fifth-round pick out of Boise State. And he's entering his third season after that breakout year in 2023. Some quick background on Khalil Shakir. His father was a master sergeant in the Marines. And early in his life, he moved around, he spent time living in Hawaii. Then he lived in Japan. And then in sixth grade, his family settled into the Southern California area. And he grew up playing football and soccer. And he was a big time recruit coming out of high school, a four star recruit. He played varsity football. As a high school freshman, he had offers to UCLA, Washington State, and Cal, but he chose Boise State. Comes from a family of athletes. His older brother ran track in college. His older sister ran track in college. And then his younger brother was a defensive back at Portland State, so he played college football. So all four of them played college sports. He's six foot, 196 pounds has nine and a half inch hands. His arm length is 29 inches. That's the first percentile. We're going to talk a lot more about that in segment three. But if you're starting to wonder why, well, if this guy's so good, why was he available in the fifth round? Why wasn't he an earlier pick? Well, first of all, I graded him mid day two. I, I can't explain to you why the NFL let him fall to the fifth round, but a big reason why, and I'll fully unpack this later on is the arm length at 29 inches. That's the first percentile. For NFL wide receivers at the NFL Scouting Combine since 1999, the first percentile. And his wingspan is 70 and three eighths of an inch, which is the fourth percentile. Athletically, he's a really good athlete, 40 yard dash of a 4 4 3. His 10 yard split is fantastic, a 1 4 9. That's the 93rd percentile for 10 yard splits in a 40 yard dash. So he can get, he can get going in a hurry, quick accelerator. His three cone drill is seven two eight. That's actually a pretty poor time. His shuttle, his twenty yard short shuttle four two one, which is pretty average. Had a vertical jump of thirty eight and a half inches at his pro day, which is an outstanding number. As well as his broad jump ten foot four inches, that's an outstanding number. Those numbers give you a relative athleticism score of a nine point zero four. Again, a perfect RAS score is a ten. So this is a really big time athlete. And so what I want to do next is share with you some excerpts from scouting reports 
of Khalil Shakir coming out of Boise State from people that I respect and people that I think what they say about prospects is worth your attention. I can tell you what I thought about him. I've already done this, right? He's I had him as a mid day two grade, loved him, thought he was a, a really exciting prospect. My favorite pick of that draft when he fell to the fifth round. So I loved him, but let me give you some outside opinion of Khalil Shakir coming out of Boise State. We're going to hear from Nate Tice, Lance Zerline, and Dane Brugler. This is what Nate Tice says. Khalil Shakir operated as an inside and outside receiver with Boise State, and he projects as being able to do the same at the NFL level. Shakir is a good route runner at all three levels, winning with body control, core strength, and quickness. He can consistently win versus man coverage despite his slighter frame. Shakir's quickness and polish also show up on his releases versus press coverage, which allows him to win on the outside. He's also an asset with the ball in his hands. He is productive on jet sweeps and screens that are designed to be that are designed to let him do damage. And he has the agility, burst, balance, and play strength to get north quickly and break tackles in a multitude of ways. We've seen that, right? Shakir plays with good toughness and is comfortable working over the middle of the field and finding soft spots versus zone coverage. His route running is already polished. He stays friendly to the quarterback and knows how to work back when needed. Shakir has a slighter frame, but his ability to win versus various coverages and looks will help him operate from the slot in the NFL. His good hands and catching range also allow him to maximize his frame and play bigger than he is listed. Overall, Shakir can step in right away for most NFL offenses as a number three weapon who can play inside and outside and also be productive on various concepts like receiver screens and design runs. He also has punt return experience that will help him carve out a role right away. Like most skinnier receivers entering the NFL, Shakir will have to show that he can consistently win versus strong press cornerbacks. It hasn't given him issues so far in his career, and it shouldn't stop him from ascending into a starting Z receiver who can be a number two target for any NFL passing attack. That's a heck of a review. I think a lot of what Nate elaborated on in his scouting report has already become true and is very much aligned with where I think his trajectory is as a player. I want to share Lance Zerline and Dane Brugler. These are much shorter, but I wanted to get that Nate Tice one out there because I thought it was really good. Lance Zerline of NFL.com says this about Khalil Shakir, a coach's dream combining competitive nature, exciting versatility, and elite character on and off the field. For a short-arm player with average explosiveness, Shakir puts an emphatic stamp on games. He's more a football player than prototypical slot receiver and needs to prove he can handle an increase in contested catches. He can be activated from a variety of alignments with his vision, wiggle, and toughness to move the chains once the ball is in his hands. He finds a way to frequently show up on the notepad when watching tape and his willingness to outperform the guy across from him should not be overlooked. Shakir should become a valuable piece for a creative play caller. And then lastly, Dane Brugler from The Athletic. A three-year starter at Boise State, Shakir was the H receiver in offensive coordinator Tim Plew's offense lining up primarily in the slot. One of the most prolific receivers in school history, he averaged 121 all-purpose yards during his junior and senior seasons, which was number one in the Mountain West Conference over that span. While he isn't a true burner, Shakir skillfully uses gear control to set up defenders and create pockets of separation with his short area quickness. He has terrific body control, which is evident in his routes, at the catch point, and as a ball carrier. Overall, Shakir has average triangle numbers, but he is a crafty route runner with excellent hand-eye coordination and adjustment skills. He projects best in the slot and can handle return responsibilities. So I thought that was important, right? We got to lay this foundation for this conversation. What did people think of Shakir's ceiling when projecting him to the NFL? And I think that was really useful. You know what I've thought about him. And so now I think we can get into, all right, what trajectory is he on? What has he proven? And what can that tell us about his role in 2024 and beyond for the Buffalo Bills? So be sure to stick with me. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets 
Guaranteed. That's 150 bucks. Win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, folks, continuing our conversation today on Khalil Shakir. I want to talk about his trajectory and what he's proven so far. So going back to his time at Boise State, he led the team in receptions his second season, and then over his final two seasons, he led the team in receiving yards. As Dane pointed out in his scouting report, over his last two seasons, he led the conference in all-purpose yards per game. I love this statistic about Khalil Shakir. 75.3% of his 208 college catches went for a first down or a touchdown. There's a clutch factor involved with throwing the ball to Khalil Shakir, and I think you've seen that happen in the NFL, based on especially what he showed us in the playoffs this year, what he showed us against Miami in the AFC East Championship game. So you think about 2022, his first year with the Buffalo Bills, a rookie out of Boise State, fifth-round pick. And I, what I remember about that year, and I, I take notes on every player for every year, so this is what I had in my notes for Khalil Shakir coming out of his rookie season. I said, really good preseason. Production was super modest, but I really enjoyed the flashes. We saw some vertical ability. He went two for three in contested situations, showcased good yards after catch ability. I think this was a foundational year for him to learn the offense and develop chemistry with Josh Allen. So perfectly reasonable. I mean, for a fifth round pick as a rookie in, a, in an offense that had, you know, Steph Diggs and Gabe Davis as established receivers, I thought he had a good 2022 campaign. And if you remember, a lot of that production kind of came later on, including in the playoffs the two playoff games in 2022 against the Dolphins and Bengals, you know, Shakir really started to showcase himself a little bit. Then, of course, 2023, these were my notes on him. He showed a lot. He proved that he's the answer in the slot, was super efficient, 49 catches on 56 targets, had one drop all season. He blocks extremely well, runs great routes, wins after the catch, is versatile, had some of the most unbelievable plays all season his catch and run against the Jets, his heroic effort against Miami in Week 18, had a crazy touchdown catch against the Steelers in the playoffs, his touchdown catch against Kansas City, and the third down conversion were elite. He's an elite competitor. Love him. That's what my notes that like I have like a journal entry on all these players. That's exactly what I wrote down when I assessed everybody coming out of 2023. So you can see year over year, just by reflecting on those summaries, there's a really good path that he's on. There's a lot to be excited about as it relates to Khalil Shakir. And you think about the journey of 2023, and the first six games were really, really quiet. In his first six games combined in 2023, four catches for 39 yards. That's it. That's it. Then he started to pick up in a big way over the last 13 games, 45 receptions on 51 targets, 646 yards and three touchdowns. Khalil Shakir led the Buffalo bills in receiving yards over his last 12 games over the bills. Last 12 games in 2023. That does include the playoffs. The last 12 games, your leading receiver, not Steph Diggs, not Gabe Davis, not Dalton Kincaid, Khalil Shakir. And my favorite thing about that is that he had 54 less targets than Stephon Diggs over the last 12 games, but 33 more receiving yards. That's crazy, right? 54 less targets. Steph Diggs, 99 targets. Khalil Shakir, 47 but Shakir had 33 more receiving yards on 54 less targets. Some other pieces of meaningful data here as we consider the trajectory 
and what Khalil Shakir has proven so far to this point. 81% reception percentage so far in the NFL. That's unbelievable efficiency. So 8.1 out of every 10 targets sent to Khalil Shakir, their their receptions. In 2023, Khalil Shakir was number one in the NFL in reception percentage by 6%. In 2023, Khalil Shakir was number one in the entire NFL in reception percentage with a 6% lead over the number two guy. It's worth pointing out that 72% of Khalil Shakir's snaps so far have come from the slot, 27% out wide, and then another 1% kind of in line or in the backfield. We'll talk, we're going to unpack that and the arm length thing in the next segment. So that's going to be fun to unpack. But I'm just giving you some relevant data here as we put this entire puzzle together. His average depth of target so far in the NFL is 9.5. His average yards after catch per reception in the NFL so far is 6.6 yards. In 2023, Khalil Shakir was fourth in the entire NFL in yards after catch per reception. So unbelievable efficiency, exceptional yards after catch production. His drop rate so far in the NFL, 4.5%. It's outstanding. So far, he's five for eight in contested situations, which is an unbelievable win rate, but also not a ton of opportunity, which is great. I don't want a high percentage of your targets being contested. That's a tough way to make a living. I say that time and time again. You can't always just be expected to go win and go get the ball at the catch point. I mean, the best guys in the league are maybe 50, 60%. You know, and there's a volume component there. I like that he's only had eight contested targets so far in his NFL career while simultaneously hauling in 81% of his overall targets. Oh, by the way, Josh Allen, 137.2 passer rating when throwing the football in the direction of Khalil Shakir. So some great, some great metrics that help us paint this overall picture. And so what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to put this all together. Who he is as a player, the scouting reports, obviously, the numbers, and try to give us a, a good mindset of what Khalil Shakir can be in 2024, what the critical factors are, and how that all works together for us to understand exactly what the Bills have in this player. So be sure to stick with me. All right, folks, welcome back. So let's project Khalil Shakir into the future. And I want to share what I'm mindful of. What are the critical factors to consider as we try to determine his ceiling and his role? The first thing I want to get into, you know, when you think about what can a player do, not just Khalil Shakir, but any player in any position, you think about their limitations. What physical limitations do they have that are going to prevent them, that's going to reduce their role because they can't just do everything? So that's what I want to get into right now. Well, we know that he has good height and weight, right? Sufficient height and weight. Coming in, what's six foot, 196 pounds. That's, that's perfectly fine. And he's a good athlete. We talked about that. An RAS score, 904. But there is the one thing that stands out, and it's the arm length. 29-inch arms. And maybe you're rolling your eyes and you're saying, Joe, who cares how long his arms are? Well, it matters a lot. It's a big reason why this guy was a fifth-round pick and not a day-two pick. 29-inch arms. Going back to 1999, I went through the entire list of players that measured at the NFL Scouting Combine and receivers that had 29-inch arms or shorter. Here's... I found three players that have had somewhat meaningful careers, right? Just, just somewhat. This, you, you'll know when I give you the list. This is it. The only three players, Braxton Berrios, Isaiah McKenzie, and Hunter Renfro. 
To me, that's the entire list of players that have 29-inch arms or shorter that have had at least somewhat meaningful NFL careers. When you go to 30 inches and under, you get Deshaun Jackson at 29 and three quarters, Greg Jennings at 30 inches, and Tyler Lockett at 30 inches. That's it. So why does this matter? Well, whenever you're scouting and you're projecting, you're trying to use data to help you find common characteristics among hits and misses. You're trying to figure out what works and position yourself to have the highest probability of being correct in that player hitting. Given that there's a very small list, I mean, of guys in the history of the NFL, or at least the recent history of the NFL since 1999 that have had meaningful careers at 29-inch arms or shorter, you got to be mindful of that. You never want to count on a guy being the exception, right? That's not an impressive list. Braxton Berrios, Isaiah McKenzie, Hunter Renfro. Literally the best three careers I could find, 29-inch arms or shorter. Now you get a little bit more excited if you add an inch because then you get Deshaun Jackson, Greg Jennings, and Tyler Lockett. But this is pretty unusual. So I'm certainly mindful of that. And how does arm length show up as a wide receiver? Well, when you're trying to beat press coverage and you want to be able to play with reach and extension and swipe hands and, and clear contact, that it matters there at the top of routes. You want to have some ability to kind of feel and push and be physical at the top of routes, catch radius, right? How, how far can you stick out your arms and catch a football? So all of that comes into play. Certain positions like running back, who cares how long their arms are? Quarterback, who cares? But pretty much every other position, arm length matters. We saw the Jaguars pick Trayvon Walker over Aiden Hutchinson with the number one pick of the draft, not because he's a better player. He got longer arms, so it matters. The next critical factor that I want to be mindful of, so in terms of physical limitations, it's literally only arm length, but it's, it's, it's meaningful. It's a meaningful data point. The next piece of information I think is relevant to consider is, well, what opportunities has he had? Well, we talked about Boise State relative to that team in that conference. He was unbelievably productive. But in the NFL, I mean, he had 45 targets last year. And I'm you know, a fraction of that as a rookie. Those 45 targets in 2023, fifth most on the team. So it's not like we've seen him in a leading role and he couldn't produce, which is intriguing. That's exciting. It's, you know, you've. You can't say that he's maxed out an opportunity because he's yet to have a big lead role in a passing game in the NFL. But there's a flip side to this as well. And that flip side is that he's never been in a leading role and everything is projection-based. This was a big cautionary tale. When we were entering the 2022 season and the Bills didn't have Emmanuel Sanders and it was this year for Gabe Davis to like, okay, you're stepping up or wrong on the ladder. Isaiah McKenzie, you're stepping up or wrong on the ladder, right? Do you remember this? All of a sudden, McKenzie goes from the four to the three. All of a sudden, Gabe goes from the three to the two. And I said, look, these are roles that these guys have never really been in. We don't we don't know. And, I, and I'd apply some of that. Or I wouldn't apply some of that. I'd apply that same logic to Khalil Shakir as we forecast him moving forward. It was a benefit to him to be in the position that he was in last year's passing offense as the fifth option. Well, now he's the two or the three, something like that, maybe the four. You think about Dalton Kincaid is probably the number one target getter this coming season. You have Curtis Samuel. You have Khalil Shakir. That's, that's your top three. I think you're probably hopeful to add somebody in the draft, which would probably be in that mix. But no matter how you spin it, it's probably the at least a three. So it is a projection. Now you like the trajectory, but it's a different ball game when suddenly, you know, teams know that the ball is going to you and they're game planning to stop you. Right. So that that remains to be seen. So what's in store for 2024 and beyond? Believe it or not, he enters 2023 as the longest tenured wide receiver on this team. <laughs> Let that sink in. Khalil Shakir 
enters 2024 as the longest tenured wide receiver on the Buffalo Bills. Which means that even though he's entering his third season, he has a level of trust, a level of chemistry, time on task in the scheme, time on task with Josh Allen that nobody can top. Which should mean plenty of opportunity, and he deserves it. I think it's going to help him a lot as we think about Josh Allen and him executing this offense next year. Just like any quarterback, he's going to want to throw the ball to the guys that he's most comfortable throwing the ball to. Right now, that's James Cook, Dawson Knox, Khalil Shakir, Dalton Kincaid, right? Even Curtis Samuel comes in on a decent contract. Whoever they draft potentially early in, in, in the 2024 NFL draft, they're not going to have that level of time on task and chemistry and establish trust like those other guys. That's going to be a benefit to Khalil Shakir. Now, a big complicating factor, I think, in Khalil Shakir and, and in so many people's mindset and, and projection of this Bills wide receiver core and passing game in general is that, well, you kind of think of a lot of these guys as best from the slot. Khalil Shakir, obviously, Dalton Kincaid, Curtis Samuel. We already talked about Khalil Shakir, a high, high percentage of his snaps being from the slot. Same thing with Curtis Samuel. Over 70% of his snaps in three of the last four years have come from the slot. In his one season with Joe Brady in Carolina, 71.4% of Curtis Samuel's snaps came from the slot. I mean, the Bills might have the best slot slot situation in the league between Shakir, Samuel, and Kincaid. But on the flip side of that, Samuel does have two seasons where he was over over 70% in wide alignments. So there's, he's done that. But I think you always have to remember this. NFL formations require seven players to be on the line of scrimmage. So you're going to have five offensive linemen and then two more that are going to be on the line of scrimmage. So when you kind of do the math here, you have seven on the line of scrimmage, a quarterback, that's eight players. Well, you have 11 players on the field, three of them don't have to be on the line of scrimmage. So probably a running back and a couple guys that are offset in the slot. So you have room. It's not like you can only have one slot player. Like that's important for us to establish. It, you don't just have one player in the slot on any given snap. You can have as many as three. So be mindful of that as you're speculating and thinking about how this all pieces together. You don't just have one slot receiver. You have multiple. So what does this mean for 2024 and beyond? I think the floor for Khalil Shakir's targets in 2024 is 80. I'm expecting 80 or more targets for Khalil Shakir moving forward in 2024, which is interesting because he's had 79 total targets so far for his career, including the playoffs. And what has he done with those 79 targets, which is right at about what I'm projecting for him next season? 64 catches, 938 yards, five touchdowns. 64 catches, 938 yards, and five touchdowns. I think something close to that is where I think he will fall in 2024. Maybe a few more targets, maybe a tick less in terms of yards per reception, but I think that's a reasonable ballpark. And I think that's important for us to acknowledge as you calibrate your expectations and you think about you know, the, the need that absolutely exists at wide receiver, but you know, Dalton Kincaid, I'm thinking 120 targets for him. I'm thinking between him and Shakir North of 200 there, potentially your top two most targeted guys in the passing game with Curtis Samuel probably being pretty close. And then, you know, if they do make a move in the first round for a wide receiver, you expect that guy to come in and get a fair amount of targets. There's plenty of opportunity available But I think it's important for us to acknowledge and know and understand what the Bills have in Khalil Shakir as we consider the need at receiver and how this is all ultimately going to come together when it's all said and done. I've enjoyed this wide receiver discussion. I mean, obviously, the Steph Diggs trade takes it from like here to here, right? That's definitely that's definitely part of this. And we've had a lot of conversations now about wide receivers, but there's so much to unpack. And I hope that you're enjoying this. I think I'm going to do an episode, maybe our next episode. At some point this week, it's going to be, what if the Bills don't draft the wide receiver in the first round? I want to think about everything, guys and girls.
I want to talk about it all. And I, I think that's a piece of this conversation that I haven't gotten to yet. So we're probably going to do that either tomorrow or the next day. Um, need to get to more receivers in the draft. We have other positions to get to in the draft, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks. So much to get to here on Locked On Bills. So don't miss anything. Make sure that you're subscribed. Would love it if you took a second to rate, review, share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again real soon.